Thank you, Jasmine, for that lovely introduction. She has to say nice things because she's in my class, and if she didn't, she'd be in trouble tomorrow. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I've taught at this school, senior chemistry, probably for the last 12 years, and before that in the UK for many more years. I'm passionate about chemistry. I've taught it for so many years, and I'm still enjoying it to this day. Um... <laughs> As I was saying, the, the thing about chemistry is it's obviously the best subject in any school curriculum. It is fascinating, it's interesting, and it's something I believe you need to make come alive because students obviously remember it better. And if you can have a bit of fun while you're teaching something, which is potentially quite a challenging subject, then it's obviously going to be a good thing. So. Um, basically, what I thought I'd do tonight is just show you a few of the little experiments that I do with my students. Um, I'll explain what I'm doing, and if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, in the email that Mr. Worsey sent, it said something like chemistry magic show, I believe, but at the risk of disappointing you, I'm afraid there's no magic here. These are just chemical reactions. I do accept to a physics teacher they may seem like magic, Sorry. <laughs> uh, so, without further ado, pretty light gas in that balloon there. Anyone know what it is? Shout out, if you think. Helium suggested, good suggestion, but not correct. Hydrogen is the only other one it could be. They're the two light gases. I do have some helium in this balloon here, but that is full of hydrogen. How can you tell them apart? Because they both are very light. They don't kind of look any differently. There is a very simple way. Helium is probably one of the most boring things imaginable. It's an element that does nothing at all. It's so unreactive, it really is very boring. If I was going to do what I'm going to do with that one in a moment, a helium, you would be very disappointed. So there's nothing much I can do with helium, except for one thing. I could breathe it in and make my voice sound like that. How about that then? <laughs> okay. <laughs> On the other hand, this is hydrogen. Already? Oh. Not used to doing this, so, you know, doing it by the book. Here we go. Now, thank you. Now, nice little boom, nothing spectacular, but obviously a nice little reaction. Nice flame, nice fireball, and so on. Um, I'm going to show you some various reactions. There's no plan or anything like that, they're just random experiments. And when I said earlier, there's no magic in this, well actually, this next reaction, I think perhaps is as close to magic as you could, can become. I've got two colorless solutions here. And what I'm going to do is simply add one to the other. And I think, when I do, that you will be very impressed. So let's see if you are. Here we go. Okay, so, are we impressed? How about now? Magic? <laughs> now then, this is actually more physics than chemistry. What we have here is a water container, which has had the bottom cut off and a bit of plastic sheet put on, and that is because there's a bungee cord inside. Now I can see you're not particularly impressed with what I've just shown you. However, it can become quite impressive if you use some smoke in it. Because if you've got smoke in it, you can do this. Oh. 
These, these things, to use the physics term, are called toroidal vortices. We probably know them better as smoke rings. And basically, the way they form, all this does is effectively push out a ball of smoke. But the ball of smoke, as it goes through the air, basically, it, can you see me? <laughs> the, the air basically kind of causes the outside of the smoke ball to kind of turn around and in on itself as it comes, obviously, and resists it. And that uh, is what causes the smoke ring to form. So probably, as I say, more physics than chemistry, but still worth it seeing, I think. OK, now then, let me show you this reaction here. OK, this reaction here is just, just got a little bit of powder here. Um, when I teach the chemistry of metals, and we talk about different metals having different reactivities, um, one of the things that I show is a displacement reaction where a more reactive metal can actually displace a less reactive one from a compound. That's a mixture of magnesium and silver nitrate. And magnesium is much more reactive than silver nitrate. But they can't react until they're both solids, and two solids can't get at each other. So effectively, they can only react when one of them is dissolved, and that's the silver nitrate. So we need some water. And we've got some water. Can we have the lights down, please, for this? I've got to try and hit that. Oh, especially with the lights off. Maybe. OK. I'm going to show you that one again. You probably can't see too much if you just looked at that one. But basically, magnesium burns with a pretty bright white flame. And it used to be used in the olden days in flash photography. These days we use electronic flashes, obviously, instead. But it still has use in things like fireworks and distress flares, things like that. OK? Can we have the lights down, but not quite as much as the last? That's perfect. Great. Thank you very much. Um, oh, the reason I'm showing this again is because there's a slight difference this time. I've added another chemical, just a tiny little bit of another chemical. Um, and that chemical just happens to be heat sensitive. Ready? Oh. <laughs> now we haven't... Yeah, okay. Can you actually see me at all at the moment? Because uh, all I can see is a big green blob in front of my eyes, basically. So, uh, okay, we've got same balloon as we started with, but this time I've added something else to it, and I've got two more here. Now, they're all filled with hydrogen, but I've also put a couple of chemicals in them. Same as firework manufacturers do, one of them has got a lithium compound in, one of them has got a sodium compound in, and one of them has got a barium compound in. And they give reds, yellows, and green colors to flames. Fireworks use them all the time. Um, so when the hydrogen flame goes this time, then we are going to see, hopefully, a better color as well. OK, let's get our lighter. I'm not quite sure which is which, because uh, they all look exactly the same. But one should be red, one yellow, and one green. OK. Right, let's see which one's first. Um, actually, we're running a bit short of time. So, um, you know, let's speed things up a little bit. Um, oh, by the way, when the hydrogen burns, like any flame, it has to use oxygen. And that's obviously in the air around, but Effectively, the hydrogen can only burn when the oxygen outside allows it to. I'm just wondering what might happen if we put the oxygen in the balloon with it? Anybody interested to know? Shall we maybe try that one as well? <laughs> oh. 
Okay. Here we go. This one has got oxygen in as well. And now we are ready for action. Okay, can I have the lights down please for this one? Thank you very much. Okay guys, are we ready? Here we go. Are you sure you're ready? Oh, two didn't go. Hang on. Let's get them close together. Where are they? There we go. Try again. The last two. Oh, and it still didn't go. Okay. Well, unfortunately, they're going on their own, but they're going, whether they like it or not. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe a little bit loud, this one, because it's got the oxygen already in it. So, you should be okay out there. Worry about me here. Here we go, guys. Thank you very much. I hope you had a bit of fun. I certainly did anyway. 